first order of business is we're going to take that round cylinder there on the payload bay door of the shuttle. That's the MPLM that Lori was talking about, the multi-purpose logistics module. With the robotic arm, we physically connected to the International Space Station. Uh, I, was, I was one of the principal op robotic arm operators. Kevin Ford, our pilot, was the other. Uh, he got the honors of uh, connecting it. I got the honors of disconnecting it. He physically connects it to the, uh, to, to, to the International Space Station. That allows us to have access to go inside. You note that we have, uh, we have goggles and masks because this is the first time this room has been in zero G. So there could be metal shavings, trash, uh, debris that could get into our eyes or we could ingest in our mouth, which would be a bad day. And so that's why we do that. We let the filtering system take care of it. After a few hours, we're able to go in there without a mask and goggles. And now we begin to, uh, we begin to unload it. <coughs> there is seven tons of materials that we have to unload. And every piece of equipment has to be put in the right place in the International Space Station. The International Space Station is equivalent to like a five-bedroom house. So it's pretty big. And so things can get lost. If you don't put something where it belongs, Looking for it would be like uh, looking for a needle in a haystack. Here you see Nicole taking out one of her experiments that she initiated on the shuttle, and she's installing it on the International Space Station because she's going to stay there for three months. And so her experiments travel with her. At the end of the day, we tag up, uh, we meet. You can see there's no up or down, so there's no right orientation to be in. So we get in whatever orientation, and we have our meeting. And, uh, and we discuss the next day's order of business. Uh, and the next day's order of business is going to be our sp first spacewalk. Our spacewalkers, uh, uh, for the space first spacewalk, Danny Olivas and Nicole Stott uh, go through a pre-brief uh, protocol. Uh, we get locked in there f with them for a few hours as we prep, uh, we prep them. And then, of course, uh, we help them put the spacesuits on. The spacesuits are so bulky, we don't dare let them dress themselves. Uh, we have to make sure that there is a good seal on the helmet. We have to make sure there's good seals on the gloves, on the boots, and, 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 uh, and, and that their life support system is working properly, their communication system is working properly, their computers are working properly, the lights and the cameras are working properly. All that we have to go through checklists to make sure we're a go for an EVA walk. And to call your right waist tether to the Ford Once UIA. To go, we get out, they depressurize, that allows them to open the hatch on the outside, and off they go to their spacewalk. We have cameras on the outside to see a lot of places. We can't see everything, but we are able to see a, a lot of places uh, on, the, on the outside of the uh, International Space Station. You see those yellow handles? Those are the handles that the astronauts use to move from one place to another. Uh, and, and so those are what they're allowed to translate on. And when, uh, like when I said, uh, we don't have uh, cameras to see everything, so what we have the next best thing is we put cameras on their helmets. So we're able to see where they're grabbing onto, like this guy right now, Danny is taking a picture of himself, uh, and, and, but, but whenever they're doing some work, if they have any questions, we can pipe in, and, uh, or uh, MCC Ground can pipe in and say, no, you're doing it wrong, do it this way kind of thing. And then when we need to move them from one place to another for long distances or with a lot of equipment, we use the robotic arm, and that's one of our jobs, is that, is that we put them on the end of the robotic arm, we put uh, two or three pieces of equipment attached to the robotic arm, and we take them to the work site. And, and, and that's, how they, uh, that's how they're able to work. Recall that we're going around the world every 90 minutes. So we have 45 minutes of daylight, 45 minutes of night. Uh, we do not stop when it's night. We continue working. Time's too valuable. We have some lights outside on the International Space Station, but when they need to get up and close and continue working, all they do is turn on their lights, their helmet lights, and they continue working throughout the night. It's only 45 minutes long. Once daylight breaks, they turn off the cameras, and they continue working in daylight. You can see this is Christer because he has his uh, Swedish flag on his shoulder. Uh, it, that was just the second spacewalk. And what we do is uh, after about seven hours of being out there, we, uh, we finally let him in. And, uh, and these guys have been in their suits about two and a half hours before the spacewalk uh, because uh, we have to prep them. And now they've been there seven hours. That's a total of about nine and a half hours in that spacesuit. So these guys are tired. 
they're hungry, they're not thirsty because they had a water bag with them. But I'm guessing if they drank that water bag, I'm guessing they want to go to the bathroom. Uh, and so, so we're trying to help them out as quickly as possible to get them out of their spacesuits. Apparently, their hands shrink when they're out in space because they can't shake hands anymore. But, uh, but they did try. And then while these guys are doing the spacewalk, we have other astronauts busy working inside the multipurpose logistics module. Here, we're taking out a big piece of equipment. This is the treadmill. Uh, and in space, it's okay if it's heavy. You just need one or two people just to guide it. Uh, you can see how we're going to install it inside the International Space Station. It's another piece of exercise equipment, treadmill for the astronauts to uh, exercise while they're up there for six months. Here's the track of the treadmill. We named it after Steve Colbert. Remember, he, he was in a uh, naming contest, and he, he actually won to, be, uh, to name a module after him, but NASA was having no part of that. So all we did is we just named a treadmill after him. And then we continue, like I said, the, uh, by and far the biggest part of our job uh, was our second objective was to move those seven tons of equipment from, from inside the MPLM onto the International Space Station. Here you see me translating a rack because we emptied the front port portion of the contents, but guess what, in the back you got some more stuff. And there we are uh, transferring here, our commander CJ Sturkow taking a delicate piece of equipment from the MPLM to the International Space Station. Uh, here he's using his feet for a novel way as a pair of hands. We don't need our feet in space, so we use them as hands to carry food trays from the MPLM to the International Space Station. So our second objective is move seven tons of material. Our third objective was to do three spacewalks. And if you're not, ha if you're not having fun in space, you're doing something wrong. So once we clear out a bunch of stuff, we have a, a playroom to play with. Uh, play around with. Here's Nicole Stott. I was filming her, then I saw these bungee cords, and this is what I did to her. I pushed her, and I said, let's film this. For, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? And, uh, and, and even though our parents tell us not to play with food, I think we called down and we got an exemption. We got permission from our parents. Here you see Danny Olivas uh, put a blob of water, and then you see a lifesaver going there. Tim Corpo, he's the one that came back with us. He takes care of it. And we call that a space eyeball. No self-righteous uh, Hispanic would do this to a tortilla. But this is, but this is Kevin Ford, so we, 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 we let him do it. He put peanut butter on one side, jelly on the other. It was actually pretty good. I actually had one. He called it a, a peanut butter jelly popsicle. Uh, and then uh, our commander uh, uh, gets a haircut every three days, whether he needs it or not. And, uh, and then how do we do hygiene in space? Uh, well, this is how we shampoo our hair. We just put some shampoo in there, rub it in. Uh, grab a towel, and we're good to go. The way we take a shower is we take that towel, we wet half of it with a little bit of soap, rub it, and then use the other half to dry ourselves up. Uh, you need a PhD to figure out why this happens. Uh, Kevin Ford tried to explain it to me. I still don't understand it. Uh, I, then I said, hey, spin me around, see if that happens to me. But unfortunately, that didn't happen to me. But it was nonetheless still fun to spin around in zero G. And this was my perspective. I took the camera and and rotated it with me, and yes, I did get dizzy. <laughs> Once we were done uh, packing and un uh, unpacking and repacking the MPLM, we closed it down, and here you see me with the robotic arm un unlatching it and uh, putting it into the uh, international, I mean, putting it into the, uh, pay, uh, uh, into the uh, bay of the uh, shuttle. The very last night, uh, we got together for the very first time. 13 of us, seven shuttle astronauts, six uh, International Space Station astronauts representing five countries. We got together for our first dinner together because everybody's busy. We have dinner at different times, but this was the first time everybody had it together and people demonstrating their f space eating capabilities. This guy needs a little bit more practice. <laughs> so that's why he got to stay to practice some more. And, 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 and there we go. Uh, we're drinking uh, urine, urinated processed water. We process the water. This is, uh, this is us saying uh, uh, goodbye on, onto the... Um, Nicole is staying on the International Space Station side, uh, and so she closes her hatch. We close our hatch, and that's going to basically uh, enable us to separate from the uh, International Space Station. <laughs>